Welcome to Marine Tech Talk, a podcast about how Teledyne Marine's innovative technologies are enabling scientific discoveries and commercial tasks in the world's oceans and waterways. In this summer series of podcasts, we introduce you to the winners of our Teledyne Marine Academic Grant for 2020. This grant offers universities and institutions the opportunity to utilize several of our flagship products free of charge for up to a six-month period to support their research programs. In this episode, we meet Christian Armstrong. Christian is a PhD candidate and student researcher working with a team from the Scottish Association for Marine Science, or SAMS. Christian and the team are investigating the physical stability of the seabed around the UK continental shelf. That's in the extremely energetic tidal flows of Western Scotland. Due to the operational challenges posed by the area's hydrodynamics, few studies have been conducted there. However, these regions are now receiving research attention due to their value for renewable energy and the insights into turbulent flows that they can bring. Now, here's Christian Armstrong with the host of Marine Tech Talk, Melissa Rossi. Hi, Christian, and welcome to Marine Tech Talk. You are a PhD student at Scottish Association for Marine Science, is that correct? That is correct, yes. Um, So the Scottish Association for Marine Science is the uh, independent marine science organization, and the PhD actually is hosted by the University of the Highlands and the Islands, or UHI for short. So what is the focus of your PhD studies? So the PhD is looking at the physical stability of the seafloor. Um, and by that, I mean the, how much the seafloor moves and changes over time. You were recently, as I mentioned, awarded this um, academic grant from Teledyne Marine. How did you hear about that grant program? Uh, it was actually through the uh, through SAMS or the Scottish Association for Marine Science. It was a, a LinkedIn ad that was circulated around the email that just happened to fall into my inbox. I actually kind of dismissed it a little bit. At first, I didn't think the project was um, particularly relevant, or or that Teledyne would pick up the project. And uh, after being persuaded by my supervisor, I decided to, to go for it with with a lot of um, a lot of uh, enthusiasm. <laughs> That's great. No, I'm really glad that you did. We actually had, at first it was a little slow, probably a lot of po- people maybe had a similar thought. And then we got a flood of applications. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> kudos to you, your application was accepted. <laughs> and obviously the equipment that we had to offer uh, was useful for the study that you're looking to do. What equipment were you awarded? Yeah, absolutely. So I, we actually, the, the project and the people who are involved in their grant, uh, we applied for the Teledyne uh, Reson CBAT um, T50R, so multi-beam echo sound or sonar. Uh, we also applied for the Pinnacle ADCP. However, I think we were pipped to the post with that one. Uh, nevertheless, I think we were being a little bit greedy with the equipment. We only actually needed the sonar. <laughs> um, the ADCP would have, been, would have been great, but it would have been supplementary, certainly. Well, uh, I'm, I'm glad to know that you did win uh, the award for the sonar, which was great. So now you've got this equipment. Uh, I know you don't actually physically have it. When Do you have an idea of when you're supposed to be receiving uh, the gear from Teledyne? We hope it will come in, in the same sort of time frame that the survey was planned to be undertaken. Uh, so we're looking end of June, maybe July. Uh, with the survey to be performed at the start of August. And what are you planning on doing with the equipment? What's the focus of this research program that you're doing? Right. So the the project that we're uh, planning to utilize equipment with for is, uh, is part of the PhD, part of the, the assessment of the physical stability of the seabed, how much the seabed moves. And we're focusing um, on the most unstable regions of the seabed. So the areas of the seabed that are the most dynamic and and when i talk about stability i'm I'm talking about uh like i say how how much the seabed evolves and changes over time and um, areas that are particularly unstable have certain features and certain characteristics uh certain structures that 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 exist in in these regions and uh, in particularly energetic 
um, tidal zones, and particularly energetic, what's, what's called hydrodynamic regions. Uh, the currents are particularly strong, and it it, it causes the, the the seabed to form um, dunes, like sand dunes in, in the desert. And these dunes uh, can migrate and move around. Uh, so this is what we're looking at surveying. And, and we've already research, we've already surveyed uh, the regions uh, previously, about about eight years ago. And we're looking, SAMS is, is looking to resurvey these regions to see how much they've changed, to see how stable these areas are. So it's a more of a follow-up on this on this region. And, uh, and hopefully we will detect uh, what's called the migration of these sedimentary structures. And from that, we can tell what the sediment pathways are, the sediment transport pathways are, and how active or, or unstable the seabed is. I, I think I saw somewhere in the description that you had sent me um, about what you're planning to do. There was a lot of reference to uh, marine construction and renewable energy. How does that tie into the research or does it tie into the research that you're doing? Yeah, certainly. So uh, marine construction, offshore construction heavily relies on the seabed for, you know, if you're, if you're installing a wind farm, you're going to mount it to the seabed in some way. The instability or stability of the seabed is, is paramount to be able to, to, to increase the longevity of these structures, whether it's laying a pipeline or, or, or deciding a shipping channel for, 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 uh, for boats and marine traffic. Um, these structures that I was mentioning, these sand dunes, if, if you were to, say, lay a pipeline or you were to uh, install a wind farm in these regions, these sedimentary structures, as they move around, these seabed structures, as they move around and migrate, can then bury or, uh, or expose the, the feature that you've, the constructions, excuse me, that you've, that you've uh, developed on the seabed. So by understanding how these sedimentary features move around and they migrate, uh, we can better plan and better uh, prepare our offshore developments for uh, the unlikely, uh, the, sorry, the likely uh, prospect of them being interfered with by these mobile sand dunes. So is that actually the end goal of your research or is this is your research part of sort of a grander scheme of looking at the areas off the coast of the UK there that would be ideal for um, renewable energy of some sort? Yeah, so that's certainly one, uh, one aspect of it. It's certainly a, a quite a major aspect of it. Um, so this, these specific regions that we're, that we're hoping to resurvey are potentially some of the most unstable regions. So they have the most, uh, the seabed is the most dynamic in these areas due to the intense tidal hydrodynamics, the intense tidal currents, but also the abundance of sediment and, and sand that can be moved around and, and, and shape the seabed. Uh, this study fits into a broader, um, a broader project, the PhD itself, which is assessing the, the entire United Kingdom uh, and, it, and its coastline and it's co- and, and the continental shelf and how dynamic the continental shelf is around the UK and it will hopefully hopefully it will fit <laughs> into the most unstable areas of seabed and we can then document uh, the spectrum of stability of of the UK continental shelf seabed. You had mentioned, I believe, that you're going to be using the equipment in two different areas. What are those areas that you're going to be investigating? Yes, that's it. Uh, so so the two separate areas. One is the Falls of Laura uh, at the mouth of Loch Etted, and the second one is the is in the Gulf of Cody Uh These two areas are fairly local to SAMS, the, the Marine Institute that we mentioned earlier. Uh, the Falls of Laura is very local; it's about 300, 400 meters away from the Marine Institute, so uh, it provides a, a very appropriate setting for resurveying uh, intense tidal hydrodynamics and the, and the seabed beneath such. Um, so these two areas are incredibly energetic tidally. The Falls of Laura is a is at the mouth of a lock, as I say, and and the constrained bathymetry as the as the tide flows into the sea lock, essentially an open ended lake, um, a one a one open ended lake. The the tide flows into this lake, and then as it tries to flow back out, it can't flow, it can't empty as quickly as the tide is is receding. So what you get is an accelerated flow through this channel. And uh, the flows can be up of four meters per second or, or, or about eight and a half knots. So it's a very energetic region. Um, so that's really local to SAMS. And it's 
and the other study area is the Gulf of Cod Reckon, a little bit further away, but much more energetic uh, by comparison. So the the depths of the of the Loch Ed, of the Falls of Laura, are at, at the mouth are around about forty to fifty meters in depth, um, as opposed to the Gulf of Cod Reckon the, and and that area where the depths are in excess of 200 meters. So, there, so there's a, a big range of depths here. And in the Cord Reckon, we have a much more energetic, a much grander uh, system, which is again tidal and is tidally accelerated through a narrowing of the, of the coastline, um, which we hope is gonna produce some very dynamic structures and a very, un, a very, a very unstable, unstable seabed. How are you gonna deploy the equipment in those areas? Yeah, so that's that's a, a big question because obviously we don't want to lose anything in these energetic regions. It's going to be in the falls of water due to the locality. We can uh, we can use the SAM's own marine research vessel, the Shoal Mara, and we will be using a pole-mounted system to attach the uh, the sonar onto the boat. Um, now the the big thing is the is the sort of we don't want to be surveying in the most energetic tidal states because we won't get anything or it'll be particularly dangerous. Um, so we're going to try and survey in the slack during slack tide. So that is when, when the, 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 uh, the incoming tide um, stops and, and becomes to, becomes to flow out. So the, 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 in, the in between stage of the flood and the ebb tide essentially. So from that, we can survey these regions, with relatively little uh, turbulence in the water, it'll be relatively smooth. And then we're going to also survey during uh, a neap tide, or the largest neap, smallest neap tide of the year. So the neap tide being the uh, the smallest range between high and low water during the the tidal stakes. What about the the other side as far as deployment? Are you also planning to use the vessel from Sam's? Right. Yes. Uh, I should go on to the other side. So the Gulf of Cod Reckon, due to its energetics um we're looking to survey from a more seasoned vessel shall we say a, a more uh, maneuverable vessel because of the, the 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 tidal slack tide window that we have is much finer um at the gulf of Cora reckon due to the much more energetic tides we're actually going to be utilizing a vessel of opportunity from a local tour group and uh they have very kindly lended us their um a very maneuverable vessel which can which frequents the Gulf often and, and frequents the Gulf during its most energetic tidal states and, and can take you on a boat tour throughout these very energetic regions. So we'll have no problem there. Have both those sites been surveyed previously? Because I, I noticed, I think in some of the reading that I did before, some of them haven't been, some of the areas in that region haven't been surveyed in a very long time and others have little or no survey data. Do both of those sites have previous data? Right, yeah. So the Firth of Lorne as a whole, which is where the Falls of Laura and the Gulf of Cod Reckon are found, has been surveyed uh, in 2000, between 2009 and 2012 by uh, the, the Scottish Association for Marine Science. So what we're essentially planning is a resurvey of specific sites that, from this original survey, show to have interesting features. Uh, the Falls of Laura, for one, um, being very local to Sam's, has some interesting dune structures and, and gravel banks that we think will be particularly dynamic and, and unstable. And uh, the Gulf of Cod Reckon shows to have some, what we think at Sam's is some world first, uh, or at least never been reported before, uh, features like interference patterns in the structures in, in the sediment dunes and some very novel structures. How long are you anticipating each one of these surveys will take? And, and you know, what type of a crew do you take with us? Are, are these other students that are at uh, SAMS? Or? So it'll be, in terms of the, 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 the crew, it'll be the skipper um, of both the Shomara and uh, the, the tour group skipper that will, that will be, that have kindly um, decided to help us out. And we'll also have myself, the principal investigator, uh, We'll have my supervisor, uh, Dr. John Howe, and then probably a um, a support scientist or a couple of support scientists to help us with the uh, sound velocity profiling um, to make sure that the, the, the sonar is calibrated to the water type there 
and also to mount the sonar and facilitate mounting the sonar onto the pole. So June to July is your window, correct? That's yeah. in both locations. Uh, you've got the equipment technically for like six months. Are you planning on using it again? Or after you wrap up this June-July window of survey, that's it, you go back and analyze the data? So the Gulf of Corrib Reckon will be surveyed just the once. Uh, however, the Falls of Laura, we're hoping to uh, assess it on a much more finer, much more higher resolution temporal scale. So a lot more frequent surveys, uh, perhaps seven, eight, maybe nine surveys of, of resurveys of the one region to see the really intricate dynamics and of, uh, of bed form of the, of the seabed instability. What do you anticipate the findings of your research will be? Do you have sort of an a idea of what you're going to find or, or a theory on what you'll find? So the findings, uh, the findings are very much based from the last survey, uh, from, the, from, the, from the previous survey and, and what we hope to find. Um, we hope to find that the seabed is firstly unstable. That would be great if we find that the seabed is unstable. Uh, that means that the project was well planned. If that's the case, then we'll find that these, these dune structures, these sand dune structures are incredibly mobile. And then we can compare the two surveys, the two bathymetric surveys, and, and get a quantification uh, of mobility, of, of instability, essentially. So are there any specific challenges you're expecting to have to overcome while you're out doing these surveys? As you can possibly imagine, uh, probably imagine the um, biggest challenge is the tidal state. Do, getting or sonar surveying during uh, the slack tides when the window is fairly narrow and if we outstay that welcome of, of a slack water welcome, we we're going to have to serve in some pretty energetic and pretty bumpy regions. Um, so that's the, that's, I think that's the big challenge of, of being able to coordinate the, so, the survey effort to a very fine window. So best possible outcome is, if I'm understanding correctly, you get to survey during the slack tide window and that you find out that the seabed is unstable. Am I correct? This is correct. Yeah, it's, it's quite, it's quite, quite, uh, quite negative, really, isn't it? The unstable seabed. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's exactly the best. I'm glad possible I'm not outcome. the only one who thought that. <laughs> no, no, at all. It's that's exactly the best possible outcome for us to find that the seabed is particularly unaccommodating for anything to be built there. That would be great. <laughs> okay, great. Well, <laughs> Christian, thank you so much for joining us today. I hope your uh, research study is. Uh, very, very successful and that you find all of the things that you're expecting to find or hoping to find, uh, that you prove that this was the perfect site for this um, study. And I'm actually hoping that maybe uh, at the end of the summer or as soon as you have data available, we might be able to bring you back on the show to talk about your findings. Uh, that would be, that'd be great. Thank you very much for having me. And uh, I'd, be, I'd be glad to come back on and report the findings of whatever we might find. All right. Congratulations. Thanks very much. Thank you, Melissa. Thanks for listening to the Marine Tech Talk podcast. We'll put a link to Christian's Twitter handle in the notes for this episode so you can learn more about his work and follow along for updates during his team's research project this summer. If you have any comments or questions about the show, you can email host Melissa Rossi at marinetechtalk at teledyne.com. If you like this podcast, please make sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts or wherever you're hearing this show. That way, you'll never miss an episode. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you again next time.